Which build order is considered both creative and also the most annoying one? This is certainly a cannon rush, a strategy that's as old as the game itself. Today we'll embark on a journey to explore the origins and history of this particular strategy. But first of all, what is a cannon rush? While this strategy could be played in different ways and it evolved over the years, the original idea was very basic. The Protoss player builds his photon cannons outside the vision of his opponent and then slowly besieges him from different angles. It either locks the defending player on one base or straight up threatens his one base economy. While this strategy doesn't always finish the game straight away, it gives the cannon rusher a huge advantage and time to expand his own economy and forces. Cannon Rush first appeared in StarCraft 1, but it also existed in other RTS games. This is a common strategy for this genre, however, perhaps only in StarCraft it's been so powerful and if not scouted early, it was very difficult to counter, especially in lower leagues. At the same time, since Cannon Rush relies heavily on the element of surprise, it was a very inconsistent strategy and was generally a non-issue on a more higher level. The trick behind the Cannon Rush is simple. Photon cannons are relatively cheap and can strike both air and ground, and they also have enough damage to quickly dispatch any early game units. Even if you can break the defensive position, it would cost you too much time and money, and your goal is to try to stop it either in the very beginning or at least with your first units and prevent it from growing or targeting your second base. Usually it's done with workers, which is why a great cannon rush must be done close to different obstacles like mineral patches. This would create a natural shield and reduce the angle of attack, preventing 360 degrees around, which gives enough time for cannons to complete. This also holds true in StarCraft 2, and since the better days, Cannon Rush became a notorious strategy. It appeared in community discussions, different memes, and even referenced in songs dedicated to StarCraft 2. But on a more higher level, it was a less common problem for players, and it was quite easy to deal with. It wasn't an ultimate weapon, as it was usually pretty easy to scout the cannon rush. However, many pro players learned new ways to abuse this strategy. Have you ever seen those little rocks around your ramp between the main base and the second base? There was one incredibly strong way to play a cannon rush in ZVP. Since Zerg players don't really have any early game range units, except for a Queen, which also had a short attack range in early Wings of Liberty, it was common to wall off the ramp with free pylons and start building cannons around the second base. This move would isolate the Zerg player on a single base, which pretty much meant a defeat. This was also possible to do for Terran with free bunkers. This is why the little destructible plate was added. However, it didn't stop the Protoss players from cannon rushes, now they just had to come up with a new way to do it. There were some maps where you could block the exit from the second base and create a wall that would threaten the natural. Here is an example of a match between MC and Idra. If he's gonna decide to plant anything behind this hatchery, there's a oh, lot of room there. One, two, three pylons walling in EG's Idra, the second scout probe that was out now trying to advance forward Idra now sending all the drones Idra who claimed he was gonna 2-0 OGS MC is on the verge of losing his natural expansion there's one photon cannon going down will he be able to get a second one off in time Idra can't quite decide what pylon he wants to target gonna go for that southern one but the two probes with the rewall off Idra in a lot of trouble yeah, here we're going to see the first pylon going down. Now the drone's going to be working on that photon cannon. Certainly going to get up. One of the probes does go down. A third cannon will stop here. Now, is he going to can't? He's not going to cancel the hatchery. And uh, oh, GG! GG! Idra doesn't even make the attempt to do any sort of cheese. Doesn't try to go for a Nidus Worm. Doesn't try to go for a Baneling Bust. Gives up the game. Similar cannon rush style could still be used even in Legacy of the Void up to this day, but the biggest cannon rush upset that ever happened in history was in Heart of the Swarm, many, many years ago. During WCS America 2014, Haas attempted to do a crazy cannon rush against Jay Dong, possibly one of the greatest Zerg players ever. This match became one of the most iconic cannon rush moments in StarCraft 2 history. This is a different cannon rush than I had in mind. What? What? He's gonna make sure nothing what? is ever... What? What the What? This is... This... 
Well, what Somebody else? tell Haas that this does not actually make sense. There's no reason well. to invest 600 minerals in pylons. Yeah, you're laughing, but he has practiced this, man. So you can laugh all you want, but there's probably a pretty good shot that this is going to work. This is never going to no? work. Oh, well, we'll see. I'm pretty sure that he has practiced this before. Jaynung is losing a lot of is mining that a time. Gateway? Yes. Maybe this is actually part of the strat, so the Zealots can run through. One cannon is about to finish up. Jaydong will be absolutely trapped on two bases, Ben. He can just kill the rocks. If he can yeah, build a spine true. crawler and he can kill the rocks, that's and true. Go I off forgot the about the rocks. Still, though, this cannon is going to do some work. This wall is up. More ca uh, he cancels the gate. Well, Ben. I'm do the commentary, please. I'm trying to find the words, but uh, so, I mean, it, it looks like this hatchery is dead. Uh, Jadong is going to have a couple of uh, spine crawlers on the low ground, but he can't yeah. actually reposition them to fight the cannon. He ends up actually canceling one. So now Hess is like, cool, I'll drop a gateway, I'm, and go there is I'm going to expand. <laughs> there, is, there is literally no way for Jadong to secure a base now. Overall, with very few exceptions, Scan Rush was not really a popular strategy on a pro level. It was more common in PvP, where you could catch your opponent by surprise, and it was also the case for ZvP. In some situations, you could also try to do a mega risky cannon rush on the main base between mineral patches, but it was still a rare thing to see on a pro level. Nevertheless, except for listed examples, this strategy relied heavily on not being scouted. It was incredibly difficult to pull it off if your opponent was looking for it, hence this is why every successful cannon rush on a high level was often celebrated. But things changed with Legacy of the Void. Well, actually things stayed the same for some time, and I would even say Can Rush got a bit worse because now the economy was a bit different and you had more workers at start, which could successfully defend your base. However, the addition of shield batteries opened the gates of hell for all Cannon Rush haters. It happened in November 2017, two years after Legacy of the Void release. Previously, Cannon Rush was mainly used to contain you on one base. Against Seron and Protoss, it was also possible to threaten the main base, but it was a very rare occasion. However, with the addition of shield batteries, you could now attack with units and get back to your static defense to regenerate, and keep on applying pressure. This immediately led to the creation of many similar strategies, which involved shield regeneration, cannon rushing and war prism or just unit micro. Now, you didn't even need to actually threaten your opponent's bases immediately, you just needed to set up your offensive positions very close to bases. Ideally, Protoss players still tried to cancel your second base, but the main goal was not to contain you, but straight up destroy you with this new build order. This totally changed the perspective on a cannon rush. Once used to be a cunning, cheeky strategy, now it was a full-blown offensive with structures. One thing remained the same, the outrage about this strategy, as it was very difficult to counter for defending players. It also became much more common on a pro level, with many nail-biting series and micro-intensive battles between different players. With this change, the cannon rush could be expanded into multiple different styles. Against Zerg players, you could play with Immortals, for other races, the Void Rays were a very good solution, and after a while, many Protoss cheesers actually went for using Stalkers to strike as early as they could. But even the old-school Cannon Rush didn't go away. It's still a worthy strategy, and while it still relies on the lack of scouting, players only seem to get better with it. Many years the majority of the community believed that it was practically impossible to Cannon Rush a top-tier Terran player because of cheap marines and the ability to lift structures and just fly away, and yet it happened with SOS and Maru. The cannon rush has begun. It looks so, so peaceful from his point of view. He's just like looking around. He's like, yeah, I'll make the next cannon here and just do all the damage in the world. For Maru to defend this is going to be so tricky. Now he's trying to start working on that one probe, but that's why there is a second probe, a mannered probe here, <laughs> to be ready and in position. Well, this is already very, very bad for Maru, man. I. Uh... I don't see how he stops this. This is about the time when you start to lift your structures up, let the orbital finish and try and save as many SCVs as possible, because he cannot fight this. And SOS already thinking ahead. He knows that there's going to be potentially a Reaper counter-attacking his mineral line. He's already got the gateway underway, gets another cannon instead of his main mineral line. Going for gas, all he has to go for is some Stalkers, some Adept. He's going to force the Command Center to fly away already here, because mining was, gonna, was about to be prevented. SOS smartly cancelling that third cannon. 
He's put in a few hundred minerals here into this uh, into this maneuver against Maru. But Maru is not dead yet. He does still have that factory across the map. The high ground there that's going to help a lot if Maru even like pulls some SCVs and chooses to attack there. By now, Maru should know what's happening. And actually, SOS warps in on the other side. Interesting. He's going to force an explosion here from that one Widow Mine and then remove it. SOS is committing to defend on the high ground. He thinks that... Uh, Maru, sorry, he thinks that SOS is going to be reinforcing there, but SOS is attacking at the front. He is, and it looks like Maru is getting stretched really thin here. The Viking does do bonus damage against the Stalkers, but there's too much. The Stalkers pick it off out of the ground. Maru picking up his base again to try and go somewhere else. Repairing with that uh, with those SCVs on that Cyclone. He actually doesn't have a ton of minerals to continue these repairs. And he just has to tap out! The most interesting thing about Cannon Rush is how dividing it is. A lot of people in the community were always advocating for Cannon Rush to be removed or at least nerfed heavily because StarCraft 2 should not have a universal strategy that would be a easy to execute, b incredibly effective on all levels. This especially became a much bigger concern after the addition of shield batteries since Cannon Rushing became a much more powerful tool. There are even dedicated Cannon Rush players who can climb from low leagues to Grand Master League using only this strategy. At the same time, a different part of the community is praising StarCraft 2 for this addition, because this is a unique opportunity to play as you want and with a special, dedicated playstyle. And whether you like Cannon Rushing or not, you gotta admit, it's always entertaining to watch games with it, at least because the action starts very early. What do you think about Cannon Rush in StarCraft 2? Is it a good thing or a bad thing for this game? Leave your opinion in the comments and check out our other content related to game mechanics and balance in StarCraft 2. Have a nice day and see you next time!